Hi, we're Team Trash with episode 3 of Trailer Trash. This time we're talking about the Magnificent Seven trailer. I'm Mac. And I'm John. And today we're going to be tackling director Anton Fuqua's remake of a remake of director Akira Kurosawa's classic Seven Samurai. Alright, let's get started. Denzel Washington uh, playing Bill yeah, Brenner's role, it looks like, as I the cowboy in black. Drink from that man. Took a job, looking for some men to join. Is it difficult? Impossible. How many you got so far? You and me. <laughs> Wonder how this Chris Pratt Denzel we work for her. dynamic is gonna go. I don't know. You could sell a movie right. just with Chris Pratt. Like, I want to see yeah. Is that he will take everything we have. That guy? Yeah. I don't know. I seek righteousness. No, I but I'll take revenge. Discount Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. 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 She's probably going to be better than Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. She's fits we are. She's probably going to be better than she did think. Can you Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah. No, I feel like everything she's done really since, uh, what's it called? American oh, Hustle. Oh, we're good. We got a I feel like she's been playing in there. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Who honestly needs to get more work? Oh, is the tracker um Vincent D'Onofrio? Yeah, he's so that's he's Kingpin. Army. Yeah, Jesus Christ, good for that guy. He cast the murder, which is also good for him that he's not playing a villain because last couple of years he's been fighting someone else's fight. These people deserve their lives, but just make sure we're fighting the battle in front of us, not the battle behind. I can't believe that's him. Good, it'll work good for him. So we have good. nowhere else to go, so. Not crazy about the song. I'm not surprised. They always put in the a song like this in the show. It, it, it is, it is a kind of football. Is that a plan? I like how they were like, and what's interesting is they're, they're taking a more modern approach. It's, it's a diverse cast of so Denzel Washington. Yeah. He looks like he was in the past year of the ministry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm assuming he's going to be Chinese. Um, and then, two, three, I think that's it. So you've got almost half minority cast out of the seven. Oh, and it looks like you had a, a Mexican in there. Yeah, as well. Chris Pratt does make a comment about that. Yeah. So you've got more than half of your seven, which is pretty good representation considering what the Wild West was actually like. Yeah. It, I think it's going to be really yeah. good, honestly. Like, I don't... Uh, I've never seen the original. I've never seen the remake. So I'm just going to see the remake of the remake. But I'm sold. It looks really... It looks like it's going to be... If you've got three and a team. half hours to kill... I don't you can watch. The I don't original. Want, don't want to do that. Or if you got like two, you can watch The Magnificent Seven, Ugh. which is good. Is it weird? No, it's fine. It's an, it's old, so it's a western. Or if you want, you can watch Thirteen Assassins, which is in the same kind of thing. It's the same structure where one guy on a mission against insurmountable odds goes about recruiting guys, and then there's a big fight scene at the end. Except the twist with 13 Assassins is that rather than protecting something like in Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai, they're out to kill somebody. It's kind of like the Oceans movies, except they're yeah. not trying yeah. to kill and someone. You can, even, you can even make the argument that the Oceans movies are themselves remakes of the Magnificent Seven. Interesting. Because the Magnificent... I'm sorry, I keep Magnificent Seven. Seven Samurai, Akira Kurosawa's <laughs> Seven Samurai is credited with being the first movie to implement this structure where it's a guy going from place to place recruiting and then doing a larger quest. Um, you see it reflected in a lot of the modern day adaptations of um, King Arthur and even in The Dark Tower. You can expect to see something like this in The Dark Tower, which is coming out next year with Idris Elba. Um, getting back on track. And Matthew McConaughey. And Matthew McQuanahanahay. Um Jumping back on track to talk about the trailer itself, um, <laughs> concerns. Um, I'm a little worried they might play it a little safe. 
um, Chris Pratt seemed like he's going to add a lot of humor. Yeah. Um, the original... That's kind of... If you're getting Chris Pratt, though, that's, that's what you're signing on for. That's true. Signing on for humor. Um, the original Magnificent Seven and the original Seven Samurai weren't afraid to be pretty bleak. Both of them had pretty pessimistic, cynical endings, um, both of which killed off a large portion of the titular Seven. I'm a little worried we're only going to see maybe one or two of them die. Yeah, and it's... My guess is it's going to be one of the smaller ones. Yeah. One of the lesser known yeah. actors. On the other hand, um, Anton Foucault has shown that he's a director who's not afraid to kill off his main characters. Um, End of Watch being the most recent example that I can think of, where he had... Uh, here we go, spoilers, guys. If you don't want spoilers, cover your ears. Um, Wait, he did End of Watch? Right? Is I don't know. I'm, asking, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, almost positive. It's Gyllenhaal and... Um, Pena, right? Yeah. I'm almost positive. Oh, yeah. I fucking love that yeah. movie. So he's he's not afraid to kill off his main characters. They um, both should have died. Yeah. They both hundred percent they both should have died. Yeah. That movie. Yeah. Oh, that movie was so good. Fuck. Um other thing I'm a little worried about is the villain. Um a lot of the times in Westerns, um the villains just Wasn't tend that to guy be in the Western and Wild Wild West. <laughs> Wasn't he the villain in that? Dude, we should do one of these videos for Wild Wild West. <laughs> what we should Wait, do a trailer <laughs> trash for Wild Wild West. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's basically a prequel to Suicide Squad. <laughs> if you think long and hard about it. <laughs> yeah, he might, have, he might have been in a while, a while less. I gotta look at I that don't want to. I don't want to look it up during this because I don't want to know if we're right or wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. He's the very least. I think he's the villain in Green Lantern, right? Maybe. Oh, what does he look like? Uh, another wonderful, critically acclaimed connection that we're making to this Wait, movie. Wait, where, where is he? But yeah, it's a problem that you see in a lot of Westerns outside, especially modern Westerns, outside of, say, um, we, the 310 to Yuma remake where you have Russell Crowe, or um, Unforgiven, where you have... Um, what's his name? Being the guy against... Is that the same guy? I don't know. I you, think it's the same you guy. You put that beard and goatee on him, they all look the same. Oh, man. Does it say who the actors are? Denzel? Yeah. Ethan So, Hulk. I think, I'd say right now there's a 50-50 chance Denzel Washington's character is going to die. No, it doesn't say. Um, fuck. It wouldn't be true to the original because in The Magnificent Seven, Yul Brenner's character who's the character that Denzel Washington is playing in this one, is one of the few to survive. Um, that being said, it looks like the character arc of Denzel Washington is one of kind of a lot of the roles that he's played in the past, most recently The Equalizer, where he's this kind of mysterious man trying to redeem himself for the bad things he's done in his past life. Um, and a lot of the time, directors and screenwriters find that the easiest way to do this is to do a self-sacrifice. So I wouldn't be surprised if Denzel doesn't see himself living to the end of the movie. Um, That'd be kind of disappointing. I'm a little concerned that they're going to try to go for a sequel and set up a franchise. Oh, which that's a good point. is the wrong move. Because... It needs to be a one and done. Yeah. Well, you call it, what, the Magnificent Eight? And then you're already, like, fat... You're well, fast no, and if, they kill, if they kill Denzel, it could still be the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Chris Pratt, I guess, would lead. And they which wouldn't... Uh, they replace like the people who died off. Well. He's not really a leading, in my opinion. I mean, like, I, he pulled it off in Guardians. I agree, and I'm going to give that one to you. I think... But he's not... Even Guardians was an ensemble piece. Yeah, I feel like he works best when you let him do his thing sort of more to yeah. the side. He's, um... Not he, to say he can't be up front, but I don't know that he I, should be a lead. I, it's not, I don't think it's a matter of could. I think he can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think he should do it. Yeah. I think he's very much like Johnny Depp where he's a much better foil to the main action, you know. Um, I don't want to use Jurassic World as an example because I, I feel like the screenwriting really of that wasn't the strongest. Mm -hmm. You can't fault him for that one, but he wasn't the strongest leading man in that. No, he yeah. was. He wasn't. He was bad in that. Uh, yeah. But, um, mm. like Mac was saying, he loves a good Western. I love a good Western. Um, 
it's been a couple of years now since we've gotten a good one. Even just the feeling of a good one. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be a Western to have that, like, Western yeah. feel. Yeah. But this feels like it's going to be a good yeah. Western. Hollywood, if any of you are watching this video, I will buy 10 tickets to anybody who gives me an adaptation of Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. Like, we'll also write your Jonah Hex movie. Yeah. If, if, you, if you'll let us, we can do it. We'll do a we much a better pitch. job than that terrible one with Megan Fox and... Pitch your Jonah Hex movie. You Poor have. pre-fame Michael Fassbender. Pitch your Jonah Hex movie. Right now? Pitch it. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, pitch it. Dude, just do it. Why not? It's a lot like Wild Wild <laughs> West, where Jonah Hex has to fight a Turnbull and his giant mechanical spider from... Uh, okay, so realistically, though, you have Jonah Hex coming off the end of the Civil War. He's still sort of grappling with his feelings as a Confederate soldier. And so it actually follows the formula a lot of 13 assassins. He gets hired to kill a number of people um, who did things during the Civil War. Um, you have a couple of characters like maybe um, an escaped slave who during the act of escaping um, murdered not only men but also women and children. And so earn, you know, the nickname, like, the Butcher of whatever. Um, you have maybe um, another Confederate jailer or a Union jailer, even if you're going to have him working for the remnants of the Confederacy. A Union jailer who really horrifically mistreated members of the Confederacy. And then as he's going through checking the names off the list, he starts to realize, okay, maybe, you know, I'm, there's more to this than I realize. And maybe I'm killing the wrong people. And maybe it's the people who hired me who aren't really squeaky clean after all. Or maybe he gets double-crossed or something. But he ends up going after the guys who originally hired him in the first place. And, like, that's your movie. <clears throat> and so you keep that kind of gritty, almost, you know, anti... Not even anti-hero. You want to go darker than that. Like, this is not a guy you would want to, you know, see or have on your side. Like, he's, he's almost like Godzilla in that he's a force of nature just rolling through dealing death. You know... Almost indiscriminately. Have it be very hard R. Okay. Here's you could my, probably do much idea. better. Yeah. Alright, alright. Okay, so you open... It's not a flashback, it's more of a dream sequence uh, of him looking back on his life. You see him being beat by his dad, his mom... A flashback from him like being an old man or in his no, prime? No, 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 no. Uh, it's a dream sequence in his prime. Okay. Uh... Him, him being beat by his dad, his mom running off with, uh, I think, a dentist. Uh, again, being traded uh, by his dad to the Apache to for safe passage. His dad promising him he'll come back, not coming back. Him being bra him in a fight with uh, the Apache chief's son. Um, him being branded by the Apache where he gets the, uh, the face scar. Um, him in the Civil War, him realizing the Civil War isn't something he wants to be a part of, uh, him, I think he gets his unit killed uh, in the Civil War and that's why he wears a uniform. I can't remember why he wears a uniform. Anyways, um, no, actually, I think that's it. I think that's it, because, yeah, oh, it doesn't matter, honestly. He, it's so whatever he, Civil it's War so stuff. so he can attract Megan Fox because she loves men in uniform, Gross. which is why she loves um, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Um, uh, anyways, she... <laughs> Transformers, The Last Night, starring the mechanical spider from Wild Wild West. Um, uh, uh, he's wearing the uniform, uh, him on a couple of bounties, and then he wakes up. He's been taken captive. In one of the Jonah Hex stories that, um, uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and I think Justin Gray did, from their run before the New 52, Jonah comes across these sisters, I think, who kidnap, not even kidnap, they just, like, capture men uh, and, like, eat them, like, just slowly over the course of a couple days. Talk about real man-eaters, right, boys? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> Anyways, uh, he ends up killing them both. Uh, or, no, he doesn't kill them. He leaves them, I think, to be, like, eaten by the men. Um, what? 
Yeah, I think that's how it goes down. He doesn't kill them. He just leaves them to like some. But why awful would the men eat them? Because uh, the, some of the men are still alive. And they've been like starved or something. No, the women have been chopping parts off the men and eating them. And so then the men torturing the men, and the men like want want revenge for like being mutilated. Okay. Uh, anyways, he goes back to town, um, collects on the bounty, tells the sheriff the men are back there. They're all dead. Um, he gets paid whatever because you don't not pay Jonah Hex. Um, and I think the story could go. He ends up leading um, like a group of outlaws or something to this small town um where it turns out the preacher of the small town is uh, his brother his long lost brother that his mom had with the man she ran off with um they both had very different experiences you could sort of go into the different walks of life they've had and how they've turned into like completely different people and it's jonah Seeing all that and not really caring, you just kind of get a look into Jonah Hex and how he like really doesn't give a shit about anyone, um, and he doesn't really feel any remorse for like the things that have happened or the things that he's done. Um, and he basically has to arm the town and like kills all of the outlaws. That's the movie. So it's like the Magnificent <laughs> Seven, but with Jonah. Hex. It's just Jonah Hex, and he kills like this entire group. And of then outlaws. what? What happens to his brother at the end? His brother lives. I think his family dies or something. Jonah ruins his life, basically. Is that what happened in your pitch, too? No, no. I don't remember if that's what happened. I think they bury... They bury their mom. I know that happens. and Or Jonah visits her grave and something, and he's just like, you know, I don't care about you. I wish I remembered exactly what happened, because I think he does something awful to the gravesite, <laughs> and it's really terrible. And the brother's just like, I don't know how we can be related. We're so different. Um, yeah, that's my pitch. So if that sounds good to you, Coen Brothers, um, who else? Ryan Johnson. It could Johnson. even just be like, he goes to take on Turnbull, and along the way, he meets a lot of the other cool people he meets. He meets, um, so I think there's a different El Diablo at the time, and it's a guy named Lazarus that's possessed by a demon that only comes out when Lazarus is asleep. Um, that's really cool. You could get Tallulah Black, the woman that was, um horribly fucking maimed and just scarred by these like by the same men twice um and then she like jonah gives her the power to like kill them then you could have um you know i don't know his name but there's a kid and in the story in the comic it goes uh his dad you know was murdered they were like immigrants or something. His dad was murdered by police. Like he went to the police for help. His dad was murdered by the police. And so, and the kid saw it. And now the kid murders. He goes to towns and murders every sheriff he sees. And his like little vest is covered in sheriff badges. And so he could that just... That right there would be a real cool visual introduction to the character. You pan up from you start with the the guns to his belt and you pan up to his vest and, and it's, it's just, just a glint sorry, of, sorry 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 yeah and then you go to a, a wider shot and you realize it's just this kid yeah you know he's walking through town and like his head only goes up to like the chest of everybody else in the town like it's it's like if carl from the walking dead developed like a crazy <laughs> oedipus complex because let's be honest he probably has one and then murdered shane murdered his father and then went on from there. Yeah. Kirkman, hit me up. I'll write for you, too. We're, we're never getting hired to write for any of these people. Um, but yeah, that would be a fun Jonah Hex pitch. It's like Magnificent Seven, but with characters from Jonah Hex. And yeah, he goes to kill Turnbull. There's even one where he's going to kill someone. And I might even be Turnbull. And the guy hires like six or seven assassins to go after him. And he they're the world's deadliest assassins. Jonah kills all of them. In like a matter of like ten pages, he kills the world's deadliest assassins without even trying. All of his friends are like passed out drunk. Uh, and he murders all of these people. And then goes and like fights uh, the big villain for the trade is really cool control of the giant mechanical spider yeah <laughs> all right so <laughs> that, final, was, that was a review <laughs> final thoughts on the trailer how many trash cans you give it out of five uh 
Three and a half. I'm going to do one lower than you. I'm going to give it a two. So one and a half lower. I'm going to give it a two. Doesn't, it makes me more apprehensive than it excites me. Um, doesn't tell me a whole lot that I wouldn't have been able to guess having seen the originals. Um, just all in all, keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't come out as bad as I think it's going to turn out. So, we'll see. Denzel, right. Pratt, rooting for you guys. Um, Hopefully you'll see this. Mr. Foqua, hopefully your movies come, to, come, good. Uh, come on the show and yes. review, uh, yeah. review your past movies trailers with us. Yes. We'd love to do one for Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, The Book I, of Eli. I will take back all bad things that I say about you if you ever show up on a show. In person. We'll talk about um, Take Me Home Tonight. Yes. And Remember the Titans. Yes. There's only like four movies I can remember those guys in. <laughs> um... All right, this was Trailer Trash with Team Trash. Bye, Bye. guys.